Hey guys, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk to you about PTG. So I'm in the Matter Hackers warehouse where we have all of our products, filament, accessories, all that, and I'm going to grab some PTG so that I can print out some models for a video. I think I'm good. So I'm here in the Matter Hackers print lab, ready to start a print using PETG on the Oldsmaker 3, which is a machine that's actually pretty good at printing pretty much any material you can throw at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start fill. There you go. It'll run through its startup cycle, heat up, and get ready to print. So I have this print setting set up. So the hot end is gonna get to 240 degrees Celsius, and then heat up to about 250 degrees Celsius, and the bed will be um, 65. So PETG is about as easy to print as PLA. It's not as warpy as ABS. In fact, once you get the first layer to stick pretty well, you're pretty much locked in. It, it'll, it'll last the rest of the print. Um, but it, it does have the thermal and wear resistant capabilities that ABS does. So you get the good, easy to print ability of PLA and the wear and thermal resistance of ABS. So if you print fixtures for your car and, and put it in there, it'll last in a hot summer's day in your car in the Arizona desert, no problem with PETG. So it has a glass transition temperature of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, whereas ABS has about 110 degrees Celsius. So ABS is more thermally resistant, but not many things will get up to that temperature. So you can print hot end parts in PETG and that's fine. And you know, print cosplay parts at a PETG, leave them in the car and that'll work fine too. So now that we got Phil started, I'm gonna wait for this one to finish, print a couple more in some other colors, and then we can talk about them. So PETG, or polyethylene terephthalate with the glycol modification, is actually one of the more common plastics out there. It's in things from water bottles to, pla it's, it's, it's everywhere. You wouldn't know how many things are actually made from PET. But most are made from PET, when you're actually printing, that glycol modification actually makes a huge difference in making it easier to print. Regular PET has a little more complications. And there's also other things like PETT, PET Plus, there's proprietary blends that try to make it easier to print, have less stringing, less bed temperature, things like that. But all around, the best way to sum up PETG is that it's the best of PLA and the best of ABS. So PETG is super clear when you're printing with natural P, uh, PETG or clear specific PETG and if it's dry and if you have one perimeter. So like this is a one perimeter vase and it's, I think you can see it, it's pretty clear. This is just a, a pencil holder that we have in the, in the showroom on, on uh, Chelsea's desk. So she uses this all day long and it's just, it's a really pretty print. You can really see through it if you were to make, uh, if you're doing cosplay and you want to put lenses in armor or you have lights all throughout it and you need something to diffuse the light, you might want to do more perimeters to help diffuse it. But if you want something that's super clear, one perimeter is pretty good. Whereas this fill is same material, but it's two perimeters and about 10% infill. So it's a little harder to see through it. You can still see through easily and see the infill, but it's it's um, not totally clear. So you're not just gonna be able to see through him like an x-ray, whereas with this, you, know, you put all your pens in here and you can immediately see all the different colors that are in there. Or you have something like this vase, which is one perimeter as well. It was a thicker nozzle. I believe it was a 0.8 nozzle that printed it. So it is, it is flexible, but it's still pretty, pretty tough, which is one of the things that PETG, uh, it, it, that's what it does. It is, it is strong at a, thin amount of thin perimeter or low infill, it's, it's a tough, tough material. PETG is a great material for anything that's stress related. So if you want to 3D print a, th a 3D printer, this is a good material to go with. You can use it for the parts that hold the motors, the parts that hold the bed, the legs. I know there are several different 3D printer companies out there that if they use 3D printed parts, they're either mostly PETG just because of how easy they are to print and they don't produce a lot of fumes. There's hardly any fumes with PETG, whereas ABS, it's, it can get a little over, overbearing. For print temperature, 
There is some amount of variable with what works. I've found 260 on one printer comes out with a spongy, fragile print. Whereas if I take that exact same G code, put that on a different printer and print it at 255, works beautifully. Rock solid, can't break it, hit it with a hammer and it's still holding strong. So let's put it to the test. Where are some safety glasses? We got some PLA here. This is PTG and let's give it a good whack. Let's give the PLA a whack. Hope you're ready for this. Where's this one? Still holding together. Now it's going, but I'm, I'm putting a lot into it. Flip it on this side. PLA. So some printers report temperatures in different ways. So you may want to print a small object first, see how strong it is. If you can break it really easily, it doesn't quite have the, the layer adhesion between each layer, which means it wasn't really as hot as it was thinking it was. So some printers just plain can't do PTG. Not only that, you need an all metal hot end. So some hot ends are lined with PTFE, like the E3D V6 Lite uses PTFE that goes all the way through the heat sink and butts up against the nozzle. And with that, it's a little easier to print PLA and ABS because it can just slip through the PTFE tube. It's, it's Teflon. So the same thing your nonstick pan's made from, that's what the tube is. So it slides through easily, but once you hit 245, which is the low end for PETG, that will degrade the Teflon. So your tube will start to, it will start to expand and the inner diameter will not be large enough to support whatever filaments going through it. You'll get clogging and it does off gas some pretty noxious stuff. So you wouldn't even want to attempt PETG if you have a PTFE lined hot end. If you have an all metal hot end, like an E3D V6, perfect. Don't need to make any modifications. It can handle that no problem because it can go to temperatures as high as 300 degrees Celsius. PTG is very similar to PLA and that it will stick to blue tape. But what I have found is on some materials like BuildTac, if you're too close to the bed, it will essentially weld to it. Like the skirt of the print would just became one with the BuildTac and that was it. It was just permanent skirt there until I printed something new, hoping that it would peel up the skirt with it and it didn't. So I just said, all right, I'm gonna put new BuildTac on this printer. With the first layer, I've actually found I want a little more of a Z offset. So with PLA, I want a good amount of smushing and squeezing between the two lines. So they're overlapping just a little bit, but not too much. With PET, I will actually pull it up a little further because of, like I said, it will weld to the part if I don't do that. With some build services like PEI or even Kapton tape, it can permanently weld to those. So with those, you would actually use some form of release agent, which may sound counterintuitive, but glue stick or hairspray can help release your, the prints. So it forms a thin layer between the PEI and the PETG to help release it so that it's separating with glue stick on the bottom of the part and that's going away. And then you're left with just PEI on, uh, as your bed. So. If you're printing PETG on PEI, you need some sort of adhesive to go on the bed so you don't take tear up the bed with it. So even though PETG when it's printed is a little bit flexible, it's still not as flexible as something like Ninja Flex. So you don't need to do any sort of slowing it down or making sure that it's not binding up in the feeder gears. It's still plenty rigid enough to go through a Bowden tube, no problem. You can print on an Ultimate, you can print on a Pulse, Lulzbot, anything. PTG is a pretty easy material to handle with any sort of extruder system. Now with layer cooling fans, it doesn't take on the abilities of ABS where ABS needs very low to no layer cooling fans. As long as you can get good layer adhesion out of it, you can turn on the cooling fans. Parts shouldn't split if it's accurately describing to you what the temperatures are. So if it's sticking together, then you can turn on the fan. The fan will work no problem with, with PTG. With supports, I usually will have a gap between the bottom of the, the print and the top of the supports about double of the layer height. So if my print is 0.2 millimeters, I'll have an air gap of 0.4 millimeters. However, with PTG, I will actually do triple the layer height. So I would have a 0.6 gap. And the reason being is that it 
it welds. It, it welds to itself. It will droop just enough where it will catch and you're not just gonna be able to pop out some support that was in, in a hole that was in the side of the part or be able to just snap it off. It takes a little bit of work in order to get that bit of support out. So just maybe, again, do some test prints where it's a model that's designed just to show how your support settings work and if it's working well, try that. If it welds too much, increase the air gap and try again. So now one of the big things with PETG, and it's not something that most people are aware of, I think, I could be completely wrong and maybe everybody knows this, but PETG is actually fairly hygroscopic and you may not notice it right away where it's not like nylon where it's completely cloudy when it's wet, but you can notice in the mechanical properties and you can sometimes see it in the print that it doesn't look quite as good, doesn't look quite as silky and glossy along the walls, but PETG does absorb water. So if you have a print dry, if you have your oven that you can set to the right temperatures and you know that it's your, your home oven, I mean, if, if that's good enough for you and that can dry out your filament and you've done that plenty, absolutely, do it that way. We have a vacuum oven, we have print dries around the office, so we'll set the PETG in there before we do any print and just let it go. One thing I do wanna clear up is that desiccant won't remove moisture from filament, it can remove moisture from the air so if you get a big bin with a lid that seals and is airtight, you can throw in a bunch of desiccant in the bottom, whether it's saving them from new spools that you buy or buying just a big bag of desiccant online and lining that along the bottom. It'll pull moisture out of the tub, so you can put your filament in there after you've dried it in a print dry or in your oven, and then the desiccant will just make sure that whatever moisture happens to be in there just goes into the desiccant and not back into your dry filament. Once you've got it set up, you could even put in a little coupling on the side of the bin and just print directly from that. So PTG is a pretty versatile material. Like I said, a lot of 3D printer companies use that material on the printed parts of the machine. So you can have a lot of different uses in it. I know I have a PTG coin sorter cup holder in my car. I have it as car hooks in the back seat. We're in California, so there's heat waves and it gets really hot in the car and you wanna make sure that your parts aren't going to just droop and wilt in the car. PTG is great for that. It's pretty easy to print with and I definitely see it having a more prevalent place within 3D printing in the near future. Hopefully the tips that I provided in this video are enough for you to get started with PTG and succeeding with it. But if you feel like there's any tips or tricks that I've missed, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.